Hmm. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am your host, known here on YouTube, Daily Motion, Vimeo, MySpace, and perhaps many other places. On the internet, I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty. Mm. Let me do that again. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm your brother. And hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra, the mighty, 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 and your snubbed up seven. Yes, yes. I want to take a few moments, a few boring moments, for those who care to listen. Most of the things that I talk about is boring. For those who have childlike, immature mentality. So, since we have childish mentality, then we are, or we gravitate towards videos that are three, four, five minutes long. We seek to be entertained or whatever and go on about our business. Our attention span is short. That is expected from a childlike mind. When you look at baby animals, when you look at baby human beings, that's a sign of immaturity. That's a sign of infantile mentality. As an adult, an adult studies as long as it is necessary whatever they choose to study. Because as an adult, your mind is mature and your mentality should be more of a serious nature. Because you want to know something. You are trying to learn something. But as a child, you are here. Your mind is there. You're everywhere. That is expected from children. Childlike mentality. Someone asked me, brother, more people will listen to you if you made your videos under 10 minutes, four or five minutes. I do not need listeners like that because this gives us a sign they are of childlike mentality. They are not thinkers. They don't study. They wish not to do any research. There is no school that you can go to where a class is three to five minutes long. Whether you like me or not or agree with me or not. I am a teacher. I am an elder. I am teaching from my experience in life, from my study, not from three or five minutes of a video, my study in this life, my study of the education that has been presented to me that took longer than three or five or ten minutes that you get in a video. Because I want you to learn. I want you to think for yourself. I want you to be able to analyze. I want you to be able to investigate. There is no investigation that lasts three to five minutes. There is no class that lasts three to five minutes when you are trying to learn something, when you're trying to study, when you are trying to evolve your mind. That is good for children looking for entertainment. So if you're looking for entertainment, this venue is the wrong venue. Go get your entertainment somewhere because here is not entertainment, but edutainment or an education. 
not an opinion. This is for us to learn. You learn from me and I learn from you. We learn from each other. We are here to share information. You cannot share good information. I said it again. You cannot share good information in three to five minutes. You can give your little tacky opinion or you can offer entertainment in three to five minutes. We are not here and I'm not here. This ministry is not here to entertain nobody but to educate your mind and cause you to grow. But for those who wish to continue to be childlike in the mind, for those who wish to continue to be children of God, but you have no desire to grow up and you want to be a child, you want to be a kids or us, what's that? Toys or us kid. That's what you want to be. Then you can be that. But don't come here trying to perpetrate a fraud acting like you want to be an adult when you in reality are a child. Either you are going to be an adult and you speak and act like an adult or just stay and go to where they service children. Go somewhere where they have sand castles and merry-go-rounds and all those things and dolls or whatever that you need these Xboxes and video games that they entertain the child's mind. But here, we are here to educate one another and inspire one another to, to your fullest potential, your fullest greatness, as great as you can be. And all of us are great. You don't have to be somebody famous. In fact, you could end up and you could turn out to be somebody famous. But we are all great because all great people stand on somebody. Michael Jackson did not become great by himself. There were many fans. There were many things up under Michael Jackson that pushed him to that level of greatness along with his talent. But without the fans, without the people that bought the records, without the ones that listened to the music, he could not have reached that magnitude. All your famous people in our struggle of black liberation, from Martin Luther King, Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm X, Nat Turner, everybody had somebody to help them, to lift them up. And when they became great, then you became great, even though nobody knew who you were. I helped somebody become great. You helped somebody become great, and we help people become rich every day. But nobody knows who we are and don't care. But I care, and we are here not talking because I want to be great, but because we're talking because you're my brother and you're my sister. We are together in a struggle learning and sharing information so that we can empower ourselves. So not only one person can stand out, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, Louis Farrakhan, whoever, but we want to be great as a entire people. It's beautiful to have a great actor like Will Smith, a great singer like Prince, a great corporation like Bob Johnson created in black entertainment television, BET. Oh, that's nice. But what we are striving for in this struggle is the greatness and to show the potential of an entire people that all of these come from. And those who are great must understand, I don't care how much money you have, I don't care who you think you are, you are no greater than your people. So Oprah is still called a nigger. Will Smith is still a nigger. Jada Smith is still a nigger. 
Colin Powell is still a nigga as far as many folks are concerned because you come from up out of niggerdom. Your people is still in bad shape. And you can live in delusion and fantasy la la land because you think because cameras are in your face. Because you drive a fancy car and live in a fancy house, you think you're beyond those things. But in this world, somebody sooner or later going to show you you ain't no better than those you come from out of some ghetto. We are not no better. That was not, that's not my subject. <laughs> I don't know how I uh, went in that direction, but everything that we share with each other, it's all good. Now, Please allow me to speak upon the chosen topic. And the chosen topic is that this struggle needs you. This thing that we call black conscience, this thing that we call black power, this thing we want to be shown black love, it is in need of you. It is in need of us. I want to begin by saying this. Uh, when I was in the nation of Islam, under the leadership of Brother Louis Farrakhan, Well, actually, prior to that, when I was a little boy, I was inspired by the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Most of you who have listened to my uh, videos and have spoken to me, you know this. After listening and after the application of the messenger of Allah's teaching, I wanted to be part of what he represented. Unfortunately, when he was among us, when he was alive, I did not have the opportunity to be part of the nation of Islam. Later, as a teenager, I would join and offer and accepted the offer to help Minister Louis Farrakhan in uplifting the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And based on that, that's what I wanted to do. I did not know who Louis Farrakhan was. I only knew that this was a man who wanted to rebuild something that I had grown to love but did not have an opportunity to become part of. So I wanted to become part of the nation of Islam. I did not accept to help or assist Louis Farrakhan because of Louis Farrakhan. I wanted to uplift the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So, the best thing since Elijah Muhammad was no longer among us, the best thing that I've seen or that I was introduced to was Minister Louis Farrakhan. And when I decided to help the minister, not follow Louis Farrakhan. I was wishing to rebuild the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. This is something that I want to make clear. Because I, again, I did not know anything about Louis Farrakhan. He was something that was new to me. In fact, I did not know anything about Malcolm X. I only knew about 
the messenger of Allah, the honorable Elijah Muhammad, the man who taught me how to love my black self and saved me from self-hatred that so many of our people became victim to. I learned how to love this dark skin, broad nose, kinky hair, and love that which I, the way that I was born. And even though I don't believe in God, I can still easily say all praises are due to Allah for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Without Elijah Muhammad, I would not be speaking with you right now. And that goes to show you how powerful this man was and is. But now, I could not just join the nation of Islam. In order to become part of the nation of Islam, there are lessons that you must learn. You must be able to get your ex. You must be able to qualify to have your name in, uh, I forgot what the book is, the book of heaven, heaven book. I forgot what they call it, actually. It's been so long. But you must qualify to get an ex. And you're not a, an official member of the nation of Islam until you Write the uh, letter and copy it exactly as Master Farah Muhammad wrote it and you learn your lessons and you repeat them by heart. I wanted to be part of the nation of Islam. And so I was willing to do that which would qualify me to become part of that which I wanted so much to be part of. There were some brothers and sisters who said that they wanted to be part of the nation. They never got past writing the letter. They would not memorize the lessons. But they claimed they wanted to be part of this. If you want to be part of something, then you must qualify yourself. They didn't want to do that. So apparently, you did not want to be part of the nation of Islam. If you want to be a police officer, you have to qualify. If you want to be a fireman, you have to qualify. If you want to be a teacher or a principal at a school, there are qualifications. Just because this is the nation of Islam, just because this is the NAACP, just because this is some group... There is qualification. Now, if you want to sit back and just help by giving a donation or buy a bean pie now and then, that's different. But to be part of something, even to be an American citizen, you must qualify. You must be born here. And if you're not born here, there are other things that you have to do, other criteria that you must follow in order to be a citizen of this country. It's easy if you're just born on this land that they call the United States of America. I almost started to say the United Snakes of America. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so used to saying the United Snakes of America. So I did those things and I got my ex. And I really did not join to a, a, I did not really understand what I was doing and that was a mistake but I was a child I was a a teenager only thing I know that I I love Elijah Muhammad I've never been really religious but I was always seeking what we call black unity I always was seeking brotherhood and sisterhood now what or why Am I bringing this up? During my time in the nation of Islam, I heard those many, many times. People would say, 
I would die for Louis Farrakhan. I would die for Allah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sacrifice for this. This is, I, this is what I, this is where I want to be. This, this is it. And when I was a young man, I heard these words and I thought these people were serious. But since that time, and during my seven to nine years as part of the Nation of Islam under the leadership of Minister Farrakhan. I watched brothers and sisters come and I watched brothers and sisters go. There was a rumor out that it was a lie, it's a rumor that once you join the Nation of Islam you can't get out. Well clearly that rumor is not true. I've seen many brothers and sisters come and I've seen many brothers and sisters go, including myself. But I did not go, or I did not leave easy. I did not go because I couldn't handle the assignment that was given to me. I did not leave because there was too much work. I left Basically because I did not view what was going on really represented the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and I left because I no longer believe in God at all. So it would be hypocritical to continue to wear a bow tie and talk about Allah and I don't believe in God and I also decided that I could not no longer participate because there was no production. There was nothing meaningful happening in the community. All this work but there was nothing that was being produced for ourselves or our community. How can you say or talk about the white man and you still working the white man's job? Been around here working day and night sacrificing 79 years and don't have nothing. I can't do it. And so since nobody or they, there was people that, that did not or could not see where I was coming from, we are still brothers and sisters, but I can no longer work under these type of conditions. So it is best that I go. I'm not your enemy. We are brothers and sisters, but I know I no longer qualify or fit the criteria that you're looking for. So it makes it, I would be, it would be hypocritical for me to stay just for the sake of staying. But I am still a child of Elijah Muhammad and you can't take that away from me. Now, when many Muslims leave under the umbrella of Islam for whatever reason, Many of them returned back to the street. Because see, they wanted to always go back to the street anyway. They still wanted to drink liquor. They still wanted to be a whore. They still wanted to smoke weed. There was something in the street. There was still, there was always something out there that they wanted. So they went to the street. So, brothers and sisters that's still in the nation, when they see me, they expect to see a person with a beard, with reef in their mouth, went back eating pork, in bad shape. But when now, when they see me, I still stand strong because I'm still with Elijah Muhammad. I'm still with the struggle, and that's what Elijah Muhammad wanted for us. He wanted us to strive and become better and work for this struggle and uplift our people. And that's what it's all about. It's not about being in the same house as long as everybody going in the same direction. And we should be cool with that. I don't
don't care anything about smoking weed. I don't care anything about drinking beer. Those things don't mean nothing to me. I'm here. And I tried to qualify. In fact, did qualify to belong to the nation of Islam because I wanted what was best in the best interest of our people. And even though I'm not in that part of the house, that's still what I want. I'm not using, oh, I couldn't get along with Farrakhan, or I can't get along with so-and-so in this organization, give, using that as an excuse to do drugs, to drink, and go right back to the foolishness that I came from up out of. I don't need Farrakhan. I don't need even Elijah Muhammad to stand up and fight for us as a people. Because I know that's what I want in my heart. And that's what you should want. You should not allow no person, nobody, when you know in your heart, this is you should allow nobody to run you away from this struggle called black revolution. Nobody, you should allow nobody to run you away from black power. I was in the nation of Islam and I have been on YouTube for a little while. There have been forces on YouTube that come against this ministry to destroy and silence my voice. But they were unsuccessful because in the Quran, because see y'all, see here I am, I'm, a, I'm, I'm Somebody that you might call an atheist. I'm a realist, not an atheist. But in the Quran, it says that you plan, but Allah also plans, and Allah is the best of planners. So you have all these people out trying to destroy the reality of this temple, trying to Take my name, make mockery of me. But as you dig a ditch for me, dig a grave for me, you might find use of that grave yourself. So the end result is I filed a lawsuit, and right now, till this day, not one faceless troll has come to say nothing. Because now they feel foolish. As, a, as you plan, Allah plans. As the wicked plan, Allah plans. And Allah is the best of planners. Y'all really don't believe that. So you go back right back to the world of the wicked. And you stop working for this cause. Don't you know that your God knows your heart? You should not allow Nobody to keep you away from the struggle. So many of you have talent. So many of you have wisdom and knowledge and understanding that you need to be out here sharing with the world. There are from 40, 70 million or more black people in this country. They need to hear this word, the words that come from up out of black consciousness. This wisdom that comes from up out of what you call black power. They need to see the organizing of a black revolution to inspire them to begin to embrace their potential. So not only a few people can be great, but we as a people can be great. If you want to be part of the nation of Islam, if you, if you want to be part of of the NAACP, if you want to work with the Realities Temple, then you should not allow nothing to keep you from that goal. Qualify yourself and do the work. And do what's asked of you. And if you can't do it Farrakhan's way, if you can't do it my way for some reason, if you can't do it, if you can't do it the way of the new Black Panther Party, then you don't leave the revolution. You don't leave Stop being conscious. You continue to do the work in the best manner that you can. You continue to awaken the minds of the people. 
so that they and we can become great. But when you sit around and use, well, I can't work with Talik. I can't work with Farrakhan. I can't work with Jesse Jackson. I can't work with so-and-so make me sick. You use this as an excuse so you can smoke your weed, drink your beer, eat your poke. So you can whore around and make babies that you don't take care of. You using that as an excuse. <laughs> There's a day of reckoning coming. Great punishment is coming to those because we know who you are. May Allah have mercy on your soul. Because see, you know better, but don't want to do better. Lazy and cowardly. Excuse makers. Don't be like that. This is the time. This is the place. How are you going to leave this world? You're going to leave this world being known as a drunk? As the white man's bitch, a dope fiend, a whole prostitute, all these different things. When you have an opportunity to stay in this struggle and help uplift your people to become the greatest people that have ever existed on this planet. Because we are the only people with the capability to break the grip of what we call pink supremacy. Or white supremacy, the greatest sickness that have ever plagued the human being. Oh man, come on now. You are better. And at one time, that's where your heart was. That's why you wanted to work with me. That's why you wanted to work with Farrakhan. That's why you wanted to work with Jesse. That's why you wanted to be part of this struggle. You don't need personality. You don't need some, some celebrity to continue this fight. So all of us who are ex-Muslims, all of us who are ex-Panther, wherever you are, wherever ex you are, don't exit. Stay in this struggle. Do what you can. Make your video. Help somebody, help somebody in the street pass the DVDs and the tapes or whatever it is. Give the people knowledge. This struggle needs your help. Your people need your help and you want to help. It's in your heart. Be part of something. This is the greatest something that will ever happen in in the in the life history of the human being be part of something of the greatest chain be part of it maybe future generations might not know your name but whenever they say man if it was not for them we would not be where we are today that would include you and the reason why they exist is because of your sacrifice, your work, and your heart. Because this is what you always wanted. You wanted what is best for our people. You wanted to see our potential. You wanted to see our greatness. And oops, there it is. There it is. And don't be sad. Because Brother Martin Luther King was not sad. Brother Martin Luther King said, look, I might not get there with you, but you're going to the mountaintop. Help me. Help all of us who are out here fighting and struggling, trying to get our people into a better position up the mountain. You have so much talent. You know so, so much. Stop thinking little of yourself. Let us stop and fight the laziness that's in us. 
Let us begin to reject the drugs and the alcohol and all these things of this world. To hell with this crap. You really don't want it. If we start doing the work, we get high when we do the work and have success and begin to build and begin to mow and begin to see the change in the people. So then when we pass this life, we can go to our second place, wherever that might be, knowing that our children and our people, they, are, they have been sent in the right direction. They're going on to do big things. In fact, they are the catalyst and they will be the example of the whole world of humanity. That is their potential. That is their destiny. A destiny by who? Destiny because that's what we want. We form that destiny. Right now we suffer because we allow other people to determine our destiny. And they don't want what is good for us. They don't want to see us at our higher potential. They always want to see us down so they can have somebody to make fun of. Somebody who they can exploit and leech off of. Those days are over. And I know you don't want that for our people. No longer. The buck stops here. Don't give up the fight. Because you can't get along with so and so. You don't like so and so. This is not about Farrakhan. This is not about Jesse. This is not about. Even those who are in the past, this is about what we want as a people. Because now your mind has become awakened. And now you know. And being, and we know that we are the fathers and mothers of future generations. And you should want them to have better than what we have. And above all, you do it because you love yourself I love those who are called black people I love those who are the descendants of slaves born in America you have and I have suffered enough it is now time that we get some of the heaven that others have gotten from our blood sweat and tears I hope that you understand where I'm coming from in this short talk. If not, jot down your comments, send me a PM, let us talk about it, but I'm pretty sure that you understand, and I hope that I inspired many of us who are X something. Just because you're an X don't mean you should lead this battle. You are a good soldier then, you are a good soldier now. Come on back to the forefront. Come back on the battlefield. And let us bang on this beast together. And get this vicious devil off our people's back once and for all. Thank you for listening. This is your brother Taliki Mira, The mighty, mighty angel snub number seven. This was and is the reality's temple on earth. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host of this particular program, known here on YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, Daily Motion, and perhaps many other places. On the internet, I am known as the Mighty, mighty, mighty. Mm. Angel snubbed up seven. I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I would like for you to bear with me as due to the changing of seasons from the summer to the fall. Sometimes I get caught up and I seem to be catching a cold 
but I would like to just share, and it is always an honor that you would allow me to share just a few moments to speak with us and hope that you are a lover of truth as it is always best to embrace the truth rather than ignore or dilute the truth because in the end it is what is best for us. This nation and the world and we as individuals, we suffer and we are not enjoying heaven on earth because of our rebellion against the truth, our failure to embrace our reality, our cowardice in challenging those who break the peace and exactly who are the peace breakers. The main persons of whom break the peace are those who claim to be of peace. So we look at our world, our world right now and what do we see? What we have seen for generations, what we have seen for the last few thousand years, the same persons always at war, but at the same time, they claim to be of peace. It began this week with rioting by believers in Islam. And one of the consequences of that riot was the murder or the death of persons who worked for the United States Embassy in Libya. And why were these people rioting? Now, we have found that perhaps terrorism was involved, not just the riot. The riot was used to cover up terroristic action. However, the crowd was upset and believed that the United States of America was behind a film that made mockery and accused the Holy Prophet Muhammad of being a child molester. So we have riots breaking out and the target is the United States, the embassies in all these major Islamic countries. Now, of course, many so-called Americans are Christian. Why are you getting so upset over this? First of all, if we are lovers of peace, then we do not tolerate nobody from among us to do to disrespect another person's belief system. You don't have to believe in the Prophet Muhammad, but you should respect another person's belief if they are your friend and ally. I do not believe in spirituality. I don't believe in religion. I don't believe in God. But since I know that around me are those who are passionate about their beliefs, then in order to respect them, then I must watch how I speak about that which they believe because in reality all of these people are fanatics. The Christians call the Muslims fanatics but Christians are just as fanatical as Muslims are. And then we and then in this bowl of soup you drop in a little bit of Judaism and the Jews are just as fanatical. All of you are religious zealots. It has been that way for the last few thousand years and you don't have to, you can get angry at me if you want, but you're doing nothing outside of what you have been doing for the last few thousand years. All of these religions, they were born and came to birth through violence. So it is no shock that you see the violence that you see in the Middle East 
or the violence perpetrated by the United States of America, a nation of Christians. This nation called the United Snakes of America, it was built on slavery, it was built on genocide, it was built on murder, lies, lies and theft, rape. What do you expect from these people? They only talk about peace. And they show you this false thing on Sunday or Saturday when they go worship. But in the meantime, they hate people. In the meantime, they degrade others. They make mockery. They always fighting among one another. Shedding guilty and the blood of innocence. Your Bible, your Quran, your Torah, all these religious books. Show me. Teach me. You said that you are people of peace. But yet it's still in your holy scriptures. Show me a lifestyle of peace. It's about rape. It's about sodomy. It's about murder. It's about all kinds of violent behavior. Even your God. Now listen to, listen to me. Even your God is jealous. Your God gets angry. And your God can't control his anger. Never a woman. And y'all should be glad that God is not a woman. Because this is behavior that you should be shamed of. This God is jealous. Don't you worship another God except me. And if you don't obey me, I'm going to kill you. I'm, I brought you into this world and I'm going to take you out. You know that's something that your parents used to say when we used to be uh, little children that, that misbehave. Your parents would say, I brought you in this world and I'll take you out. This God sounds no different than some hoodlum in the street with his angels behind him, a mafia godfather. That's how this God sounds to me. Thus, I don't want anything to do with religion. And then what makes things worse is that the Muslims and the Jews and the Christians, what makes their behavior even worse is they believe they are justified because this jealous God says, or they believe this jealous God is with them. And they do these things in the name of God. So I will enslave you. Because God say so. I'm a man. And God said, I run the household. I run this stuff. So I will not treat the woman as an equal. And I will use violent methods to control my children. Because God said, spare the rod, spoil the child. So I'll do that. These Religious people are insane. They are crazy. You have never in history seen those who say they are atheists or non-believers in God behave this way. Yes, there are atheists who have done great harm, but they never justified it because they said, God is with me. So this is what makes things worse. So you have... Muslims and Christians fighting one another. They disrespect one another. Because one believes they are better than another. Then you have Jewish people in the state of Israel. Who is waiting and planning on murdering Muslims in Iran. Because those Muslims are a threat to us. It's all about religion. And why is everybody upset? Because God's said that the state of Israel belongs to us. It is all madness. It is insanity at the brink. But this is expected because a world is falling. There must be anger. There must be the war of what they call in your scriptures, the war of Armageddon. It all comes out in the wash. You love everybody. But you will hate me because I don't believe in God. 
you will become prejudiced against me because I don't believe in God. In fact, in the past, these religions have beaten, murdered, terrorized, forced their beliefs on other people. That's why they are as big as they are because they use violence in order to spread Islam, violence to spread Judaism, violence to spread Christianity all over this planet. And we know that's how it was done. And we praise a God that supports, advocates this type of behavior. This world of religion is madness. And we should, if we have any type of mentality, if you can think for yourself a little bit, then you are wise to leave these people alone. They are savages. They are uncivilized. They hate their mama, hate their fathers because they don't believe in God. They'll kill you, murder you outright, and say it's all right because that's what God wants. Can't you see? This is insanity. Warmongers. Where is the peace? Show me the peace that y'all talking about. Except on Sunday. There is none. Look at your behavior. Not only today, but look at your history. Now straighten it up if you can, but you can't because that's how you are. Religion makes murderers. Religion makes killers and religion makes slaves and that's what we see throughout history and it continues today. Jot down your comments. This was your brother, the angel snuck number seven and I'm already 5,000. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host of this particular program, known here on YouTube and many other places as the mighty, 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 mm. and your snub number seven, your brother, and hopefully your friend. Talik Ibn Ra. I remember not long ago when I was a child in school and for those who have listened to my videos I am sure that you heard me say this before that as a child, I used to spend hours upon hours drawing the American flag. When I was a child going to school, before the school day began, we would say the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America. And I would draw the stars and the stripes. And as a child, I felt so good to be part of a country that I heard was so great. But then I began to learn that this country that I am a citizen of and I was taught so brave, so great. It was great, but I began to learn that this nation called the United States of America, I started to say United Snakes of America. <laughs> I'm getting used to saying the United Snakes of America. And as a child, I began to learn that this country was great, but it is wickedly great. An immoral, unrighteous, wicked place. Whereas in the scriptures, it says that this nation 
has become a habitation of devils, a place of every foul and filthy bird. And if I did not know any better, and if I lived in a land, if my mind was delusional, I would believe the amber waves of grain and the stories of George Washington chopping down a cherry tree. I shall not take tell a lie and all this bull and the pretty story about the pilgrims all fabricated lies told to children and as adults we continue to believe these fabricated manufactured lies when the truth of the matter is this nation was built on slavery it was built on deception it was built on rape murder theft genocide so evil, so wicked within the country itself. The people are drunks. The people are pedophiles. The people are dope fiends. The people are porn addicts. The people are gender confused. The scriptures, those of you who believe in scriptures, but you don't want to believe this is your nation, this is your country. It is a place for every foul and filthy bird it has become a habitation of devils and anywhere on the earth where people want to do unrighteous behavior where they want to do what they want to do they want freedom then they bring their nasty vile profane wacky backside to the united snakes of america because in america as long as you want to do something filthy as long as you want to do something unnatural you can come here and do as you please and all this is embraced. And then they have the nerve when you want to stand up for your rights as a gender confused person, they have a the nerve to deny you the right to be married, but it is all right for you to practice your behavior. What difference do it make? So here is America, the so-called beautiful, and whenever America gets to the point where it seems that they have the world under control because America believes it is the police for the world. It believes that everybody on the planet is supposed to be like the United Snakes of America, that everybody on the planet is supposed to be like Europeans, supposed to become just like what the Europeans have built, this civilization. What you have and what your ancestors have passed down to your generations don't mean nothing because it's not, it's not good enough for this life. It is frowned upon and looked upon as uncivilized and savage behavior by those who are in power, those who are loyal and patriotic to a lifestyle that was created on murder and bullying other people. So now you have the United Snakes of America. Now you have this nation. For just a little while, it believed it had this planet under control. All of a sudden, here comes protest once again. The burning of the American flag. Death to America. All over. When we thought. They thought. I'm not part of the conspiracy. I'm not part of. This policy. Of wickedness. And speaking of. Policy and wickedness. You have those. Who are patriotic to America. You have those. Who love America. And the president of the United Snakes always get before the people. And they always talk, these presidents and these senators and these Congress people, whoever, they always tell the American people about America's vital interests. And I ask you, patriotic, loyal American, what is America's vital interest? You can go out on the street and ask these 
patriotic, loyal Americans, what is America's vital interest? And they cannot tell you because they don't know. But they support it. They support their leadership. And you don't even know what your leaders are doing. The leadership of America always talk about Americans, America's foreign policy. What is America's foreign policy? They don't know. You don't know. You don't know what America's vital interest is, nor do you know what America's foreign policy is. But we do know, on the outside looking in, we see what this country is doing. We know that this country was born on racism. And we know, looking around the earth, and we see how America slips and slides like the snake. We notice that it is and does not give a care about dark countries where you find black people or any person of color. They go to these countries in order to exploit them like they have always done. And if you don't bow down to America, then they seek to destroy you. They want everybody to be their little puppet, their little slave. This country was built by liars, thieves, rapists and murderers. The forefathers of this country, they were the criminals of England. They put the criminals of England, of England, put them on a boat, and if you make it, you make it. And if you make it, then whatever you accomplish, whatever you do is in the name of England. And the women, see, whoo, and the women were not pretty women. They were not, well, some of them might have been physically beautiful, but they were the harlots. They were the whores. They were the prostitutes from out of England. These were the type of women that were put on the ships and all the riffraff. All the riffraff of England, the criminals and the prostitutes of these women, look it up, do your research. I'm not telling you no fear. That's who the forefathers were. These were the original people that came here. It reminds you of the, what's that movie called? The Deadly Dozen. You had these people, I believe they were serving life sentences or something in prison, but if they joined the army, and they took on some of the most dangerous missions. If they survived the dangerous missions, then they would be set free. These were criminals placed on a boat. They didn't have nothing to lose. They were in prisons. They were in dungeons. Sent to America. If you make it, you make it. If you don't, you don't. I'm telling you. So here America is. They are the ultimate trickster. The wolf in sheep's clothing. Many of you, you are upset about what I'm talking to you about because from your view you see a sheep but there is a wolf under that sheep skin these people I live here been living here with my eyes open I see the wickedness of the government I see the racism I have been a victim of their racism nothing has changed a greedy nation that's why everybody fat a wasteful nation because they steal so much so you have you steal more than what you need so you become wasteful that's why Americans are fat the children are fat the dogs and the cats are fat in America oh man but now your time is coming to a close because the world is beginning to see what America and Western civilization, what you're really about, and you have put yourself on a self-destructive path. And I don't think that you can be saved. But one thing for sure, and I warn and try to tell black folks or anybody with any kind of sense, this ship is one that you need to get the heck off. Drop down your comments. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, Taliki Mira. This was and is the reality's temple on earth.
Well, howdy there, partner. This is your brother, the mighty one, Angel Snub Nub Seven. And uh, we just want to be a little casual for these few minutes. I just want to, I guess, just present something to us that we may, I guess, take another look or think about this particular subject that I like to present for us to conversate and speak on. Now, I wish to make a confession that I am not the most smartest person in the world. I don't claim to be the most intelligent. I don't claim to be the most charismatic, the most handsome. <laughs> Oh, I refuse to make such claims. And beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Intelligence is in the eye of the beholder. All these different things. And I don't make such claims. And one claim that I definitely would not try to brag about is my mathematical skills. Now, I can count money and my mathematical skills is poor, but at this time sufficient. I don't know too much about ge geometry and trigonometry and all of these ometries <laughs> when it comes to math. I would never claim to know economics like Ben Fernacki. What's his name? The head of the Federal Reserve of which brothers and sisters, and I'm pretty sure by this time, we do know that the Federal Reserve has nothing to do with the federal government. It is a private corporation founded, I believe, around 1913. Uh, somewhere around the the after or during prior the first world war something like that y'all correct me because y'all are amateur historians so you should know all these things right <laughs> but I, what I would like to say is that just recently the chairman of the Federal Reserve just announced that they were willing to pump into this economy every six months until a certain goal is achieved in the economic status of this nation. A certain amount of billions of dollars. Something like a bailout. They are bailing out the banks giving more money to the rich nobody is investing in the poor those who could perhaps open uh, small mom and pop businesses that could farm more land or do something with that type of money no we're going to give it to the rich people we're going to give it to the losers those who are rich and incompetent to the mortgage lenders, the banks, until they invest into the economy and bring it back to where it belongs. It, now, I'm not a CPA. I'm not a math whiz, all these different things. But something about this just don't make any sense. But then when I think about it, from where I am an expert, I am an expert in the method of operation of racist Caucasian people. That I'm an expert in. That I have studied for a long time. 
That is why so many of you do not want me to speak on those things. See, we have to understand the mentality of the racist Caucasian American people and Caucasian people in general because it is their history. It is not a secret. It is not hate. It is your method of operation. Why do we call a person a criminal? To slap somebody one time and you get convicted of assault does not make you a criminal. However, if in 1981 you did it, 1982 you did it, you did it in 1983 four or five times, you keep going to jail back and forth, you continue these behaviors that cause you to go to jail, and you are convicted and guilty of these things, then we call you a criminal because you continue to do these things that break the law and you end up in a convicted of criminal uh, accusations and you plead guilty and you are a criminal. The method of operation that we have seen over and over again in America is that the racist Caucasian people in leadership always believe they can buy themselves out. They can buy themselves out of problems and situations. I give you some money. So, so they offer rewards so you can snitch and run out a criminal. Tell us about so and so. I give you a million dollars. Sell your mama out, I give you millions of dollars. They always believe people are up for sale. Here, Negro, you can have your own talk show. Here, Negro, I'll let you vote. Here, Negro, you can put rims on your car. Here, Negro, you can have an Xbox, an iPhone. Here, we'll give you a, a rap record contract. Don't tell us about black struggle. Don't tell us about your ancestors. Don't talk about slavery. Be comfortable. I'm going to buy you out. The only Negroes that talk all this slave stuff are the ones that we can't buy with a pretty car. Let's make a deal. That's how they think. And if I can't make a deal with you, listen. If I can't make a deal with you, then I shoot you on the balcony in Tennessee. Put a bullet through your neck. I cause problems for you. So when you stand at the Audubon ballroom, I blow you away with shotguns and pistols. I wish this was like the good old days because the good old days I could just go out and just hang you out right. Don't have to worry about nothing at all. But that's how they think. So here you are. You have these racists who are controlling, who head these private corporations called the Federal Reserve. We're going to bail. We're going to try to buy our way, buy ourselves out of this situation. But at the same time now, I remember y'all said that you have a high IQ. Black folks and other people have low IQs. While the great Caucasian people, y'all have high IQs. But look at the situation that you're in. And you're steady going down, down, down. And you won't tell your people what is happening, the truth. Even though they are suffering, they know things are much worse than what you claim, but they holding on to the great white hope. And so now we're going to buy ourselves out. It has not yet worked. So when you can't buy yourself out of a situation, what does the racist Caucasian leadership do then? Then they plan assassination. Then they plan war. They plan murder. Who is on the hit list? Let's get Iran. Who is on the hit list? Let's get Syria. 
Who is on the hit list? We working on China. We have to have a war. Because if we can get here and have a war, wars have always saved the American economy. And if we have war with the right people and win this war, we don't have to worry about debt anymore. These are murderers. These are criminals. They exhibit criminal behavior. What is a criminal? Who is a criminal? A criminal is a person that continue to act outside of law, that outside of what we call justice, outside of those things which bring peace to, to, to other life forms that's around you. So you will see. But it's also a sign of a nation that is in trouble. That they are willing to commit suicide in order to try to survive. Because they their IQ is not as high as they claim. Because they are not as good and they are not angels as they claim. They are warmongers, peace breakers, and they continue this type of behavior. And you can continue to support them if you wish. But I'm letting you know, Caucasian America and Black America, Chinese America, all Americans, you need to know that your government is up to no good. And you are in worse shape then they tell you, they control your media, all that freedom of speech, bull crap. They control CNN, NBC, ABC. They're not going to allow the media to, to tell you just how bad shape that this nation is in. You are in the process of watching this nation fall as Rome fell, as all wicked and evil nations that fell before it. It's falling. You don't want to hear that, do you? Well, it's too bad because you're seeing it and you're part of the process. But if your leadership, if you got rid of your corrupt leadership, things might change. You might have a, cha a chance to save yourself. But you support these wicked people because you are a proud and patriotic American and that's what they are hoping for. And while you are hoping, they are looking at hope is lost. So that's the end of my time. Just 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 conversate about it. Jot down your comments.